Hey friends, welcome back. Hope you are having a good time jamming with your monostone and some of the um, lessons and techniques that we've worked with so far. So in this video, we are going to go over how to sit down with your drum, tune into you and how you're feeling, and to tap into uh, tap into your own energy, and then create and play music from that space um, in a way where you know if you are in the flow and you're doing it doing it right, the music can act as sort of a mirror for you to see yourself, learn about yourself, and also soothe yourself so that you walk away from playing and you feel really good, like, wow, that was an awesome jam, as opposed to like, ah, oh, man, this is so boring. Um, so, you know, you only really will get to that place of being like, oh, this is boring, or oh, I'm not digging this. If, if you're playing music and you're just playing it de facto, you're just going to the drum and you're just, you're just starting to hit it and, and you're not being present with it. You're, if you're approaching it with these preconceived notions about what you're going to do, what you're going to play, how you're going to play it, um, it's fine if you're writing a piece, but if you are really just wanting to play and have fun, which is what these instruments are all about, then it's worth it to take some time, just right when you pick up your instrument, take a breath, and then notice internally, like, what is your internal, internal tempo? What is your internal speed? Um, how are you feeling? Are you feeling super energetic and rambunctious and playful? Or are you feeling like you need some peace and calm and tranquility? And, uh, you know, if you're needing tranquility, but you come out and you're just playing a bunch of fast stuff, you're probably gonna feel that disconnect, um, if I had to guess. Because I feel that disconnect. And then I have to remind myself, oh, <laughs> I'm feeling this way because I'm not actually playing from a connected place uh, with being connected to myself. So I'll stop playing, take a breath, and then try to tune in to that whatever tempo I might be able to start feeling or visualizing on the inside. And the tempo, if you're not familiar, is like the beat. So I'm just gonna snap it out until I feel, this is a four, four beat. So one, two, three. I'm just gonna snap it out until I feel a place that I'm feeling good at right now. once you feel like you've identified that tempo, start playing it on the drum just on a single note. Even if it's just the one and three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you can start in two, three, four, two, three, four. and then add another note. And here I've got a core rhythm now. So from this core rhythm, I can branch out and play some of the other notes. considered a core rhythm. If 
back to the core rhythm. So that actually felt pretty good to me and it felt creative. And it's, I think, because of taking that time to tune in. But I wanna pause there and say one of the basic ways of using a tongue drum to create music is, and to create a vibe is you establish a core rhythm. So, so this would be, I'm, and I'm using my hand over here as like an offbeat. And I'm just doing that because I like to do that sometimes. Um, sometimes I like to just play with one hand. We'll talk about that in another video. Um, but you build your core rhythm and that's what sets the groove. You know, it's got the groove down. And this is what you maintain for the duration of this segment that you're playing, you know. And then you move on, or as you're playing that core rhythm, you find pockets of space where you can branch out and play other complementary notes. So it's, you know. That's how you get a core rhythm going, and then you add a melody layer on top of it in the empty spaces. So let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop tapping with my hand and do something else here. Maybe I'll just ride this note here. Like I was telling you, I just commonly do. I'll just try that. Or maybe I'll try it down here. And there's, you could call that a core rhythm too, or a melody, either way, how, however you look at it. Basic lesson here is find a core rhythm. Let's do a different one now. Um, and, it, and if you're playing along and you lose your core rhythm, like the core rhythm is what's going to ground it, ground your entire song into a vibe and into a beat. And then you bring the melody in on top of that by branching out to the other notes. So let's, um, Oh, this is one I wrote on this drum, which is the B-flat minor pentatonic, one of my favorite scales. It's absolutely calming and relaxing. Um, this is one I was working on the other day, just, you know, just using these chords here on either side of the scale. So that's the core rhythm of this piece. And then I branch out to other notes. <laughs> it's hard to do while talking though. out to play other things but I'm always coming back to this
The same is true for playing with mallets. Um, you know. find a core rhythm and then you expand upon that rhythm with a melody, some flourishes in between in the in-between spaces of the core melody and then you come back to the core rhythm. And that is a way to create a consistent sound um, where you know it's not just sporadic notes being played all over the place. You've got a vibe, you've got a groove, you've got, um, you know, you've got a home for the song to come back to, and then you venture away from that home, and then you come back to it, and it's like this tension and release, um, that can, that can happen, you'll find, with more dissonance or minor chords sometimes, um, and if you're ever playing and you feel like you get lost, obviously, you know, you can come back to just playing that bass. It doesn't have to be fancy. You could make meditation music with two or three notes. I'm getting too fla flashy here. Like to me that's just, it's two notes, but it's a nice vibe and it would be considered a core rhythm in my book. Anyways. So something that's gonna really help you with establishing really good rhythms, really good core rhythms, and really good, uh, just a really good sound, is to just have a basic understanding of tempo and metronome. And I'm not gonna go into it too much here because there's tons of information already on YouTube that you can check out. But just understanding, you know, a 4-4 four, four beat, one, two, three, four, and then it starts over one, two, three, four. And just being able to keep track of that while you're playing of where the beat is and understanding when a phrase starts, a phrase of rhythm starts and when a phrase ends. Like one phrase would be one, two, and three, and four and then it starts over. And so that's your loop. And that's why I wanted to talk about phrasing for a second, is because there is a place where the phrase starts and there's a place where the phrase ends. And in order for it to really make sense musically, um, it, you know, you need to have a sense of what the start is, what the end is, and where you're looping your rhythmic core. And of course you don't have to play that way. You can play super duper melodically if you want without any kind of rhythm. Um, and just be free flowing jazz like. Okay, final note that I want to leave you all with is just the idea of really not getting too many preconceived notions about what you want to play when you sit down, really allowing yourself to discover these inner rhythms that you, these inner syncopations that you feel that you really are drawn to. Everybody is gonna be totally different. Everyone's gonna feel the music in a different way. And if you can just get to that relaxed and present place and allow those rhythms to flow out of you, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can learn a lot about yourself, um, the types of rhythms and music that, that really flow out of you are a great, reference point for what you like, what you need, and um, 
you know, where you're headed with music. So be spontaneous, be free, allow your own voice and your own style to emerge and just, you know, keep listening and listen to how things are changing as you move forward and play little by little, you know, better and better and better and better. So I'm going to end this video there. I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, getting a sense of how to establish a core rhythm and how to add melodic flourishes on top of that. Um, two really great, great skills to have for developing really good sound. So thank you all for watching. Peace, love, and monostone. See you in the next episode.